We all seen The Empire Strikes Back a dozen times or more. Some of us first saw it in 1980. Some first saw it on VHS or DVD. And some saw it for the first time in 1997 with the special edition release. But most of us never seen the original ending. Not even us that saw the film in 1980. As the original ending was only on 70mm prints of the film that were shown at theaters before the film went into wide release. As the 77mm print was being shown in some theaters, Tom Smith, Industrial Light and Magic's general manager, got a phone call from George Lucas. On the phone call, Lucas told him, I don't want to tell you this, but we need some shots for Empire. Tom was a little shocked and couldn't believe what Lucas was telling him, thinking at first it had to be a joke. Tom let him know that the film was already in theaters and work was already done. He told Lucas it was much too late. But Lucas pressed on, telling him no, that it wasn't in all theaters. Lucas had been watching some of the 77 Miller prints at screenings, when he realized watching it that the end wasn't clear. In the final moments of the film, it shows the heroes rendezvousing with the Rebel fleet, Luke and Leia with the droids inside a medical frigate, and Lando and Chewbacca in the Falcon, about to head off the free Han Solo. In the original 70 millimeter print, Sure, it was clear where Lando and Chewbacca was. They were on the Falcon, in the cockpit. But what about Luke and Leia and the droids? Were they in the back of the Falcon? Maybe on some other ship far away? To Lucas, it wasn't clear. And if it wasn't clear to George Lucas, he knew it wouldn't be clear to the audience watching the film. The film had been released on May 21st. In selected theaters, that could show 70mm prints of the film. Lucas knew he had about three weeks before the wide 35mm film release on June 18th. This was enough time Lucas felt to add the needed shots to help explain the ending better. But Lucas had faith in the ILM team. Ken Wilston, the Industrial Light of Magic effects cameraman, was told they had to get back to work on Empire Strikes Back. At the time, Ken was in Los Angeles, taking a much needed break after believing he had finished the film. When he first heard he was needed back to work on the film, he thought it was a joke, telling Tom, that's funny, that's a good joke, but quickly learned it was no joke at all. Ken headed to a meeting with Star Wars artist Joe Johnston and George Lucas at Lucasfilm's office, known as Egg Company, located in Southern California. There they would work on a storyboard of the needed scenes to help flush out the ending. They came up with three shots that needed to be added to the film. In the original 70mm print of the film, the camera begins to move forward from the Rebel fleet, revealing the Falcon docked to a medical frigate. The scene then cuts to the inside of the Falcon. In the cockpit, we see Lando and Chewbacca. A new shot had to be added here to see the other views of the fleet before the camera would focus on the Falcon. A few X-Wings and a Y-Wing would pass by the camera, and then we would see the opposite side of the medical frigate and a Rebel transporter in the new shot. Shot number two was added before we see Lando and Chewbacca in the cockpit. The new shot would have the camera moving in on the Falcon, lowering its view to the cockpit. This would have to be matched up with the original cut, showing Lando and Chewbacca in the cockpit. Shot number three, the final new shot would take most of the work. The camera would pan from the Falcon to the medical frigate. The camera would zoom close to the window, but it'd be at an angle where we wouldn't see the heroes inside. The scene would then cut to an inside view of Luke, Leia, and the droids. In the original 70mm cut, the scene goes from Lando and Chewbacca and the Falcon right to Luke and the others inside the medical frigate, not showing where they were in relation to the ships. The Industrial Light and Magic team had to get all these shots done, and then Lucasfilm had to edit it into the film in record time. Not only would stock materials be needed, a handful of new models had to be constructed to complete the shot. This longer cut, even if not much longer, would cause them to have to redo the film's score. And some of the dialogue had to be redone, so it sounded like it come from a comlink speaker. The Industrial Light and Magic team and the editors had their work cut out for them for sure. ILM's Ken Smith would explain in the making of the Empire Strikes Back book that it was a real challenge that Lucas had given them, and they all wanted to show Lucas that they could do it. The new scene took three weeks, a record time for the Industrial Lights and Magic team. Lucas was impressed, but he jokingly asked them if they could do that in three weeks, why did it take them so long to do all the others? Now let's take a look at both film cuts. At the top is the 35mm cut that we're all familiar with. At the bottom of the screen is the 70mm cut that was shown in a limited release in 1980. Luke, 
We're ready for takeoff. Good luck, Mando. When we find Jabba the Hutt and that bounty hunter, we'll contact you. I'll meet you at the rendezvous point on Tatooine. Princess, we'll find Han. I promise. Chewie, I'll be waiting for your signal. Take care, you two. May the force be with you. Well, that's a look at the original ending to The Empire Strikes Back. As always, thumb up so you like my content, subscribe to the channel, and we'll talk again soon. Hey, Jumpman <laughs> channel popping, though. Thank you, sir, for that unsolicited testimony. <laughs>